So today I'm going to tell you why counterfeits have gotten so good. They're almost undetectable. With the exception of the green dot test, which requires a loop, which a lot of people don't even still own, uh, magic card counterfeits are identical. Now this has a lot to do with the commercialization. So 10 years ago, it was a guy who was printing cards. He owned a poker card company. And in China, often when you have a big printing company doing poker cards on a commercial level, the Chinese government is somehow involved. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a business, right? Uh, if you doubt that, you can ask Jack Ma how he's doing today. So Jack Ma is their China's version of Elon Musk. Obviously, he is MIA, even though he was very vocal. And now he's silent. So there you go. That's how much control of the company he has. Alibaba, just one of the hugest companies, right? It's basically an Amazon. So back to the question that I want to have is what would prevent somebody from counterfeiting magic cards in a country that doesn't care about the IP or the copyright? And the very government that is supposedly going to protect your intellectual rights has holes in its IP. I'm an IP attorney. A lot of what I do on a day to day is something called PCTs. And uh, so PCT is Patent Cooperation Treaty. Very simply put, you have a patent that's been approved in the US. You want to take your market like Tesla to China. You get your patent. Obviously, in China, the patent has to be the very basis of the patent has to be translated into Mandarin, right? So people understand what is actually being protected. Otherwise, how would they even read it? It would be absurd for the patent to still be in English if it's being applied in a different country because no one would know what it means. And then you would then have approval process as if it was getting approved for the first time. And a, a patent in the US can be rejected by a country. So I'm using China as this example because we have a counterfeit example, but um, the EU, if they think, oh, well, we have some other convention that's very similar, but it wasn't disclosed, so we'll, we'll reject it. So a lot of companies, they go to the China because they see it as a huge market and they see it as you know a good thing to show their investors. And then, hey, man, we got the patent in the US, how hard will it be? The, so when you are talking about countries like Brazil, like China, even Canada, where the copyright protections and Hasbro, the power does not extend, uh, Russia, North Korea, I mean, imagine starting a fake magic company in North Korea. I mean, as long as you got the government A-OK, -okay, who's, who's going to stop you, right? My war, my, my biggest concern at the time, 10 years ago, when we're talking about Dawson De Juan, who made poker up cards, not for bicycle, but for some other big card, maybe at casinos and stuff, he was making them. He had the commercial items. He had the commercial printer, he had the commercial cutter. Very interesting when you talk about alpha and beta, the only real difference on some of the cards. Uh, now some of the cards, they have printing differences, they have wording differences, they have kerning differences, and so I get that. But uh, some of the cards do not. And it's the pressure of the cut. So if you cut with scissors, that cut looks different. You can even try it right now. Um, if you cut your a card with scissors and you try to make it a alpha corner, it's gonna look kind of weird compared to our normal alpha card, which is cut using a commercial heavy pressure, right? A lot of pressure is being compressed um, to make a commercial cut because they're cutting these in large sheets. Um, so my, my idea was always, hey, what if somebody commercial use actual high quality commercial printing? So this guy already has it. He just doesn't have the DPI of the card. He doesn't know enough about it. But remember, a, a graphic designer, you, you talk about AI today, but a graphic design, even back then, they should be able to take a high resolution image of a card. They should be able to take a real card, scan it in, change the differences, right? Or to make sure that the thing looks legit. And the rosate pattern is just a third, it's some type of degree, I think it's 30 degrees, but it's just a way of printing. 
So it's just how the rollers are rolled commercially. So what if uh, somebody in North Korea or in China decides, hey, you know what, this is a market. And you might be like, oh no, the magic cards. No, magic cards are meant to be played. They're not meant to be valued. So artwork, very, very Picasso's can be duplicated. There was that story about a guy who kept selling fake Picasso's because he had the style down. And it was just some dude in China. And, and he knew how to do it in the, in the art galleries. It was like, oh, we found this new Picasso. They were making, every, everyone makes money from this. Don't, don't get me wrong. Everyone's making money from this. That's why they're doing it. If there's no money, then nobody would do it. So I said, hey, this guy has basically what he needs, right? He just needs like to invest in a graphic designer or something to work on the kerning and the, the rolling. And you need somebody who's a magic player. That's what I figured out. If this guy somehow played magic, he could print a top 10,000 Tom McGuire for a thousand bucks, no problem. And the Tom McGuire would be very, very close to real. And, and that's kind of what I'm telling you right now is they got to that point. Now, what well, you might be like, what about the green dot test? What is that? That's four little dots, dot, 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 L. It's shaped in an L shape. I think it is very difficult to get that because it's microscopic. It's like loop. You got to loop it. You cannot see it and then your eyes cannot see it. What could they solve that problem? Yes, but until people, until like every magic player buys a loop, there's no reason to solve it. If you're just going to counterfeit the Dominaria remastered, you're just going to counterfeit the newer cards. Then, I mean, even at that point, I, I have heard that some of these new cards don't even, I have to loop them to decide myself. Some of these new cards don't even have the green dots in the back because the print quality is so off. I mean, I've seen cards that were printed. <laughs> it looks like, you know, heavy ink. And I see cards that don't have any, no ink on it. So the print quality is so poor that, that like for a $20 standard mythic, whatever the most playable mythic is at any given time, you know, the, the print quality today is at the point where, is it real? Is it fake? No one, you know, you, know, you cannot compare. You cannot compare as opposed to the print quality with a, a Lotus. The best way to figure out if your Lotus is fake is to have a real Lotus that you know is authenticated by an expert and then just compare every little element of it. But that's what I would say. I, I, I The concern I had back then, and that was 10 years ago, 2013, yeah. Um, the concern I had back then was very simple. You can watch my videos from 10 years ago. And I, I said this, I'm not concerned about a dude in his mom's basement making counterfeit cards from a printer, like a, you know, a, commercial, a, 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 a printer that he bought from Best Buy. The best printer in Best Buy is not gonna work. I'm not concerned about, there was this guy who said, oh, I can make foil cards from Kinko's. I'm not concerned about that because Kinko's, again, is not commercial to the point that I'm talking about. I'm talking about these people legit make magic cards full time. They legit have the printing abilities. They have the paper stock. They have, like, if you make designer um, poker cards that are being sent out to casinos so they can't cheat, right? The quality and expert, I mean, again, you're going to be very good at what you do because you're making casino cards that are being sent out that, again, if there are little miscuts, there, there's uh, there's that famous story of um, the poker player. I forget what his name is. He's, very, he's like the most famous poker player. He played Bakma or Backlock or something like that. Backlock and and he had a person next to him who was Asian, of course, and she could determine the cuts. So she knew what card was on the top of the deck because she had such good memory or whatever that is called that she can memorize every single cut of the card. And then that's how he won millions of dollars. Then he was sued and so on. There's actually a legal case. You can check it out. Um, so if you are the printing company and you make that mistake and not every one of your cards is identical, you know, the ace of spades is not identical to the two of spades, you're effed. Because somebody like that poker player is going to run you up for $10 million. That casino. And guess who eventually they're going to not buy poker cards from? You. And you're going to get a bad reputation. Because no casino wants uh, Phil Ivey. His name was Phil Ivey to run you up. Because your cards are not aligned correctly. Every card is aligned differently. 
So if you had somebody who could notice these slight alignment changes, they could predict the exact top card of the deck. So um, yeah, that, that's obviously very bad. So we're not talking about no mom and pop shop. We're talking about a multi, maybe, maybe all $100 million operation. They're, they're printing poker cards for casinos. And you know, like I mentioned, you know, a slight miscut on the wrong card could cost casinos tens of millions of dollars, which it did with Phil Ivey. Again, you can look at the case and he figured it out. All he needed was a magic player to tell him what card to print, tell him how to get the images and so on, and he's good to go. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Bye guys.